You know, I looked around for quite a while to find an appropriate, an appropriate start for this tape since Dave is coming down with his repaired, soon to be repaired, hopefully we'll try to repair it plain. Of course, he flew into a fence at Coxsackie. <clears throat> we don't know what, if he was doing a DFI, a <laughs> drunk while flying or whatever. Anyway, I was looking for an appropriate picture for you, Dave. It took me about a half an hour, but I found one. And don't do this. Don't try this at home. Famous words of Dave Midgley. I never realized, looking at these, these Spitfire books, just how many pictures they have of Spitfires that have gone into the, <laughs> into the ground. Anyway, we got to get in a crash repair mood. Our mission, should we decide to accept it, is to repair Midgley's plane. Maybe we won't even accept it, the heck with it. The kind of picture you don't see in every magazine. Here's a, a Spitfire with the gear, a Spitfire, a Seafire. I guess he didn't make the deck. Another one of these don't try this at home things. Anyway, is what I love about having these books. something you don't see every day. Pictures of a, a Spitfire with American markings crashing. Here's a beauty of clip wing. Now I can just picture the boss saying, now, now tell me Dave, how did this happen? Isn't the rudder supposed to be on the top, Dave? Another sea fire mishap. Look at all the gasoline underneath the plane. Eey, fire hazard. Anyway, this happened kind of on a regular basis to sea fires. We talk about depressing photos. This had a hurt. Gee, I tell you, this, this gets me in a mood to fix things. Oh, man. Can you imagine how many accidents they had in World War II with these things? Anyway, I like them better when they're all in one piece, buffed out and shiny. That's the way I like them the best, just like that. No crashes, no repairs. Just keep them all flying and keep Josen flying and Leroy Black's flying and everybody. Just keep them all in one piece. Very nice comforting thing that all winter, just every time you walk up and down the stairs, look at the Spitfire Air Force here. Anyway, we have work to do. This is not going to be a fun day. It's a work day. Right there. That's what it's all about. Another great painting day over at Ken's shop. Well, <laughs> the only thing I can say is at least it's not raining anymore. No, it is raining just a little. We moved the shop to Seattle. We should have yeah, we should have moved to Seattle. That's the whole deal. Look at this. What a mess. Anyway, we're looking across the street, and there's an abandoned piece of property. Maybe we can make a flying field there. Buy a goat or something and let them eat all the hay. Well, it looks like you got some paint. Is it still tacky? Yep, still yeah, but tacky. it's it's cold and it's damp. You it's going to take time to dry. No, it's. It's going to take, maybe take another day. Well, you don't want to put a second coat on any of these drawers now. That's for sure. If you're going to paint something, paint something else. See, you got no heat here at night, so these you might as well consider they were sitting outside, uh, you know, overnight. Anyway, this is... We're trying to do about a, a two-minute blurb on every tape about where Ken sits as far as getting his shop going. <laughs> or almost going. <laughs> anyway. 
When we last left the horn production line here, we set up a big aluminum bar and we were putting horns on and we got about 600 more to do here, so that's our mission. Should we decide to check it today, make more horns. Obviously these have to be a nice tight fit on the wires where you're really just filling up a joint with solder. And you can see we had the production line going here. We're closing in on a home stretch of having a, a nice amount of these. Now, one of the things, an old Craig Gunder trick, when you're done with the solder and it cools, it's kind of messy. Leave them in a bucket of water for a while. That gets all the flux off. If you don't do that, the flux is like a glass-like substance and you really can't have a mess on your hands. This is the, it's called Stay Silve and Silver Brazing Rod. I don't know if we got the label for this guy here. Kind of expensive. In fact, it's downright, downright a fortune here. 45% Silver Brazing Alloy. This is really made by Harris Driver. Really good stuff. You never hear it is failing in service. Anyway, we'll get a couple lined up here on the machine and do a couple of them. Well, we're just going to basically try to get these done today because what we want to do is get down to the plater. The trick is not to let them sit in a bucket of water. If you have to let them sit over the weekend or something, put them in a bucket of kerosene. Keeps them from rusting until they go to the plater. Hey, you only got, you only got a 300 to go there. What do you want? Now you'll hear from many other people and they'll all try to claim that they invented 8th inch horns but I'm going to tell you right up front, forget it, I did. I had it published in 1968. I made the first set of 8th inch horns that I had ever seen. Now if somebody else invented them, hey I know somebody in one of the old magazines did have a plane with 8th inch horns but the things were half the length of the, the, the uh, flaps. True 8th inch horns as we know them today. I'll take the full credit. Since they steal the credit from me on everything else, I may as well take it when I deserve it. Anyway, Kenny's going right down the line here. We have it lined up so we can really do about, I don't know, we're doing about 20 at a shot here. time I made a set of horns, it, was, it took me all day, and I made 20 of them before I got two that were straight, even. Now we're going to be tooling up. This is one of, our, one of the products Kenny's going to be having in his catalog, and we hope we're going to be able to make them for John Brodeck for his kits, and basically for everybody else, because there's, there's, there's virtually nobody making them right now, unless you want to count the plastic sig horns as one of the things. They really aren't, aren't part of anything I can see in my future, but uh, we like to get good quality horns available at a good price so everybody can have them. Now the trick is to get the flux. The flux turns to a liquid right at the temperature, just, just below where the solder will melt. The solder will, goes to the heat, so you heat the opposite side of the horn pulls the solder through and then just put one dot on the other side to make it nice cosmetically. Did you pull one away? Yeah. Okay, now we, we're actually using a bar here. You can see what we're doing using this solid aluminum bar. And when the solder has already flowed through, if they happen to walk out, sometimes they walk from the heat, you just tap them right back. This is a good way to, you know, if you want to set up your own horn business, there you go. All you need is <laughs> a torch. Now, I like to use the little propane torch when I'm working in the house. I don't like to have the acetylene torch. It takes a little, little longer to heat the joints, but you don't need to deal with having a tank and a hose and all the equipment that goes in. I really don't have the room at the house. But when we come down here and now that we're setting up what amounts to be a real production line, going to be able to have some real nice stuff and I'm hoping soon I'm going to be able to have a punch press down here and some other machinery that will make this really work well for us. Pretty 
ready when they're done. But of course, the idea is to get that quality joint going. But the other thing is now they're going to sit in that bucket of water for a couple of hours. And we're going to clean them and then bring them down to the plater for a plating. This is the last one. There's two over on the other side, two or three. I figured out the best way to speed production up on this. We've dramatically cut our production time. I'm going to show you what it is. This is a trade secret. Now, don't go putting this on anybody else's videos. We don't even want John Brodak to know the secret. -da 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 -da. <laughs> but if that doesn't make you work hard, and ooh, that smells good. Mm. Three to go. Two to go. Three. Oh, and then off to the platers. Off to the Now, we ran into a, well, not unusual, impossible. It's 65 degrees. We're all working in our t-shirt. Dave is down here with this plane. We're going to try to get the fuselage tissued on it and some, some final sanding. It's got the original fiberglass cowl, Aries type of cowl. And we'll try to get a little bit of footage of this guy on. But the major reason is he's got his plane that he... What, what do we call this plane now? Fence plane? Fence. The fence. And what we did, we set up a table. First of all, you can't work off a normal table. You have to have something to absorb the material we're going to put on here to get the finish off in spots. We want to try to set this up. Well, the body's broken in half. That's number one. The fuselage needs to be at least tacked together so it just doesn't get any worse. We ought to get some hot stuff just to tack that. This repair you're not going to be able to do until we get all the the other stuff off. And this is the key thing I wanted to show. Never go back and bend the lead out. Now we could. You'd think we could do that. No, no. We'll heat this solder joint and get a brand new one on there for sure. So with that in mind, let's get the material out and let's, let's do a, uh, go to work. Time to go to work. We're trying to take pictures of everything so he can recreate this. He's going to recreate the whole paint job. All the paint's coming off. It was starting to lift. Do you have any fresh C8? It ha it's not 100 years I didn't old yet? I bring any C8. All right, I got, I got some C8 here. You know where the CA is, Woody, on the edge of the bench? By the razors? Yeah, there's one there that would, in a, uh, that looks, well, you'll figure it out. All bring right. them all out. Bring the kicker, too. Yeah. We want to get a, a little look at the paint job, because obviously it's one of the things we want to try to recreate, the Welsh fluorocarbon. That I know. Okay. I think it's safe to say this was your best flying plane. Maybe not. I think so. Well, so far, Oni. Everything that has to do with that is a so far. Okay, let's just look now. We're, are we missing this piece? We have to I've recreate that piece? I've got all the pieces. I okay. believe I have them all. I, okay. I even brought Always ex, save I even the brought pieces. Ex, I even brought extra ribs, new okay. ribs, in case we have to make some. Yeah, that'll be helpful. All right, I just want to look around and assess... This flap is in, that may just be a, a cosmetic, just fill it. Well, well, first thing, before we even start playing with the paint, let's tack glue this together mm -hmm. so that while we're working on it, we don't, it doesn't keep flopping and breaking yeah, and flopping cool. and breaking. Then we need to see what pieces we're missing. I want to get the plane in one piece before we start going right. to the next I've got all the step. pieces. Okay. I've got and this, obviously, we're not going to be using this over and over and over again, so. All right. Just little pieces here and there. Yeah, they're all pretty much here. Okay, having all the pieces, we'll shut the garage door be so the part One repair to make. Okay, we're trying. Well, all right, don't worry about that's, it. Yeah, that's, that's just don't worry. a piece of... You can do one bay there. Yep. And what we decided to do is get as much of the paint off. He wants to go basically back down to wood. So the easiest way to get paint off a plane, and you can do it to any plane any time, you can do it out on a field. This is retarder. Take a rag with retarder. Do a little demo of how you get the paint off with retarder. You need, you need to get it wetter again. And you need to put this on the chair. Get it good and wet. This is a good trick for doing a repair, any, any kind of repair. Just use retarder. Take a spot on a plane where you want to make... We'd like to go back down to Silva without going down where we have to redo the tissue. And the retarder will dry out in a day or so and you should be in good shape. 
Now, a couple of the tricks for doing this, you don't want to take and pour it on the plane. You want to just wipe the finish right off. You got to get a little wetter than that if you want to wipe it. It's coming. It's coming. Okay. The clear's just, you know, the clear's just. Moving yeah. Around. If in doubt, it's better to do it a little less than, you know, don't get it soaked. But it goes in by the hinges and everything. There you go. Mm -hmm. And the paint just comes off and you back down to silver. I'm assuming one wet sanding and one coat of silver and you'd be back to where this plane was before you put the yellow on. And if you're meticulous about it, tomorrow morning we'll have a, uh, you know, I want to start working on the body with your father while you're doing this. But that'll be an excellent thing. And then we need to, once the body's in one piece, I'll start piecing this wing and we'll get that lead out in there. Definitely, definitely the tsunami lesson. Do not use a lead out that's already been bent once. Let's just get this. This is a significant thing. A lot of people don't know that you can do this. Well, you have a red aeroplane and you want to make it green. Hmm. Well, you're a gallon of retorter and a couple rolls of paper towels. I'd take your rings off. Yeah. Because what happens, the retorter is going to get under the ring. And get your skin. And your skin. Yeah, get rid of all the jewelry. That's too good on the airplane not to save it. Yeah, the, now the object of saving, you might think, oh boy, you know, what, why would you save something like this? Well, you know this plane was a good flying plane. The alignments were all good. The nose section was solid. You know it wasn't overweight, and you know it was straight. About the only thing that's really is the cos that's really questionable now is the cosmetics. You had all the stuff off the tailwood. Uh, as oh. much as I can. There's a okay. little bit right in here, but okay. And then we'll CA that body back together. Yep. Okay. And it it goes right together very hard and very positive, so it should. Okay. Be it does. So yeah. we'll just just even get it that it isn't just flopping around it. right exactly just that's the whole it. deal yeah that looks like a nice clean break it is okay that's great and you know you can you can take the whole thing and be push, yeah push it right back yeah in. and the ca will get in there and, and it'll, that, it'll be fine and that because once you have no paint on you can re-sand it and re-ca the joint and double tissue over that joint when you go to do that joint dave that, just double tissue it that goes right to back together very solid all right great that'll be one less thing to fool with See, a lot of people just don't, they don't know that you can take the paint off almost as quick as you can put it on in this way. Some or if, faster. Or if you started, well, let me tell you something. If you started sanding this with 600 wet and dry right now, you wouldn't be done by tomorrow, you know? You, this is a lot of work to get this sanded back down. But to get it off with the retorter, it's really a lot. I think it's a lot. You just, if you can, save those two bays. Now you only have a patch. Right. See, the problem with working this, the way this, you don't want to wind up with, Leave. right here you have a ridge. That's the problem when you do it this way. And you ne you, by the time you bondo this in and fill it in, it, it's, you know, it's more work than if you just recovered the wing. Really, blending that in is more work. You almost can't save that right now. You don't know if you can, but... What, this? Yeah. How do you, because you've got to blend that back down. You can save that back in. Or another thing you could do... You can put the tissue on here, sand it down, put another, so that right. you're filling this in with a, tissue. Why, I can also do a linoleum cut. You could I do can a, linoleum a linoleum cut there, linoleum sure. Cut and put it in and okay. just build it up. Because otherwise, if you tissue over this, you're always going to have that little wrinkle yeah, down no, there. No, no, you don't want Okay. To. All right, Woody, let's get this body. Let's get some CA. Get this body tacked back together anyway. Try to get is is slit this from the back so you'll have th from the top you won't see this joint you know what i mean it's like a shingle you, when you look from one side you don't see the joints you won't see this joint from the top if you can get this it'll be good yeah this is going to come off all right and you got that just peel back end it about there if you can usually that'll peel right up. so you'll actually have two spots you have to recover on the whole plane you'll have two two areas to recover. And I may be able to save that top piece. Let's see if we can save that. It'd be a nice saving of time. Okay. This actually isn't broken here. This is a, a dent. It's just a scratch. Yeah, that's a big saving that it isn't. This is kind of a bad one. Kind of a bad piece in there. Uh, There's not a lot of... Well, we're going to make a new piece for that. And I'll show you a good trick for making that. Sure. All right, Woody, I'm saving all these pieces up here. Just save them all for now. Well, I've only got paper that I'm... You got rubber on. gloves in yeah. the house? Downstairs, in by the epoxy. You know where all the epoxies are? 
look around it. It's a, bring the whole box out because you're right. going to need them. Right they get of, holes in them right away when you use In front of Wendy's desk. Yeah, right by the epoxy. All right, you can see most of this is just glomming right off. This is the part that's going to be difficult to get aligned and fixed. But most of this is just going to be, you'll look at how nice the finisher on this was. Boy, that word was is a big word, is oh, it? Boy, if there ever was a big oh, word. Was, yeah. Wow. Wow. Was, how, how appropriate. This was. Uwe Degner sent me a piece of his finish to show me how nice it was. Was, I hate that word. Anyway, and the idea of this is, let's see if we can get in, is from one side, you can see the hinge line is, is slit. And this is going to have to be retissued over. We're going to try to save as much of the tissue as we can and just take it down a silver so of patches to blend in. When you finish this, then I want to glue the body together. I'm ready. I want to get this. Yeah, I, I want to. I want. I don't want him to be working on one end of the plane. Let him finish what he's doing. You get this little thing chipped away here. Get the gear blocks out. Gear block. Gear blocks. Yeah, he. I think he's got the other gear block up the other end of the. I got them out. Yeah, okay, and save the screws. It's like doing open heart surgery, huh, Woody? Yeah, it sure is. Oh, yeah, it's coming up. Just takes time. You, that It's the first day that you work on it like this that it's really miserable. And then after the second or third day, it starts to shape up. This is a couple of hours, we know that. In a couple of hours, it'll start to look, you know, a whole lot better. Here's the old lead out. Now, believe me when I tell you first-hand knowledge, if you take this and bend it back, about 50% of the time, you'll live to tell about it. And 50% of the time, you wind up in Tsunamiville. Anyway. Now what we could do is, while I'm downstairs, heat this joint and then grab it with pliers and pull that out there. Gotta pull it out the back way. Okay, here's the soldering iron here, Earl. I'm gonna cut the it back. The extension cord's right over there. Uh, yeah, cut back cut as, much, back as, as much as you can. As much as I can. Heat it, because we're gonna have to have it hot when we put the other piece of wire back in there for the repair piece. How's this hey, coming, okay? This, the trick to this is changing the, change the towel. Right, okay. Rubber once gloves. You, once you fill, once the towel fills and it stops coming off easy, just, just turn chuck the it. towel. I told you, five rolls, I think Bill Rich used five rolls when he did his plane. Five rolls and of you towels. Don't need a lot, you don't need a lot of retarder. Nope. No, retarder works no. good. It's just, no. it's just change in the surface. It's like sandpaper. What happens is you're picking up the paint, it's on end, you're just rubbing it with paint. See, right now, it's picking up it's the paint like off, a little magnet. It's coming off fine right now. Okay. In a minute, it's going to stop. As soon as it does, chuck it and go get another towel. As soon as it does, just move to another spot on the towel. And then exactly. when the towel's full. All right, that's a good tip for somebody who wants to do this. Where is this cord you're talking about? Later. Uh, yeah. This is it. We got the old wire out, the new wire in, and we're just waiting for it to cool. And then waiting for it to cool. Then we want to put a hook. It's gone through the copper tube, put a hook on it. Heat this and slide it down nice and tight, and we'll be back to having an untwisted lead out. Oh, ah, the building inspector is here. Dun 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 dun. Ah, you just want to be on a world famous video, the sinking of the Titanic, the sinking of the. Okay. Sinking of something. Like coat. Yeah, that's oh, cool. thank you. This is like a pre-windy coat. That's how old this is. So it's thank nice. you. Pre-windy coat. Oh my pre God. Yeah. Pre-Tyrannosaurus oh, Rex. And your light is still on. You're still filming. That's okay. All right, Woody's bending his back. Watch it. Maybe he's still hot. And ah. then make a hook. Not a, not a problem. Okay, you're tough. I like working with tough guys. Now clip off just a little bit. Leave, leave like, no, nah, leave an eighth of, oh, you're cutting the whole thing oh, off. No, 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 I would just bend in the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, now you can put, now grab it with the wire cutters and twist it back. You know, make a fish hook out of it. That'll do. Oh, yeah, that's not going anywhere. That's now let's solder over that. Resolder it, heat up the gun, you got solder here, and then number one step, anytime you use Stay Bright, deflux it. We gotta get this, get our defluxing stuff mixed. It's all frozen up in there. Okay, baking soda and water. She said casual tonight. Great. And I said Karen and Wendy will enjoy it. Terrific. You mean Wendy? I like casual. Wendy doesn't have to wear a suit.
His helmet. Is that Wynn in there? It looks like Wynn with no shoulders. <laughs> Remember Wynn? That was a funny thing. All right, it looks good. All right, you, you definitely, this can dry overnight, and we can tissue this tomorrow. There you go, Wendy. Okay, that's soldered up. Let's get it defluxed. You got to stir this up. This stuff has been sitting out here. Stir it up, defluxize it, and we'll start doing a little, so see what we can repair on this wing. You don't think we're going to be able to put tissue right over this bond, though, huh? Yeah, you can. It's smooth enough. If it isn't, if it's a high spot where you have that bond, though. high spot. It no. was a low spot, and it's all yeah. sanded in. Yeah, it looked pretty good when I... I mean, it was a huge low spot. Nice canopy. I know the guy who makes them. Nice canopy, nice fiberglass cowl. Oh, I'm telling you, you have all the latest accessories here. There you go. Okay. All right, all defluxed. Let's see what we can do about piecing back a little a little piece of this wing there. You can see there's pieces missing. So the first thing I want to do is try to get this piece kind of secured back in there somehow. So we're working with half of the wing attached and then try to engineer up a piece up here. Let's get out a bunch of brand new, a whole bunch of brand new blades for this. Some nice new XL blades. We don't need any of this stuff. Nah, this is all nah that's, that's history. Lose that. Okay, the lead outs are fixed. Now we want the grain going this way. Yep. If I can get this piece in here. It's too long. Uh, trim it's a quarter too of an inch off it. Too long. Let me see, trim it. Quarter of an inch, trim it. Just go right down there. Trim that off first. The piece that's cracked is back in here, so we made up a patch. And that'll that'll act like a a little support there. Okay. So the first thing, let's get that piece glued in position before we go. We'll work from one end. We want to work from the back to the front on one side. Okay. Now wait. Let me get my hand under here. Hold on. I want to get the wood all nice all and flat. Down, nice yeah. and flat. Get it down. Now when I lay this in, this isn't going to kick right away. Uh -huh. Not in this temperature, let me get a, a good joint in there. Okay, now drop that in. Okay, now let me t put, put it down in my hand. Okay, take it up. Now I can press it. Okay, now just hit it with a little kicker. All right, let me get hit it. What, your hand? No, 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 no. I'll glue my hand to this before it's over anyway. All right, it's going. It's going. That's good. Okay, that gets us that piece. Here, I'll hold it down a little bit. No, it's, it's already kicking. I can feel the heat. Okay. And it's coming out the other side of the wing. I can feel my oh, finger getting glued to the wing. All right. Okay, that takes care of that. Let's make the same thing right now right for there. this small piece, a half a piece. Same thing. Make it out of this eighth inch. This is a nice solid piece of eighth inch. Oh, you wow. push that down. And just let it almost come oh, to the wow. crack for now. Okay, I got you about three quarters. Okay. Drop that in there. What's the deal now? I got a, a brace in here. Okay, can you see where this is doubled with eighth inch? To, this is yeah. all cracked. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now he's making a piece. Ah, uh, it's a 30 second. Tool. 30 second, okay. Then we'll have some support around. See, the spar is broken here right. and here. Then I want to clip this piece out and put a doubler around the spar so that we got half of this. Then we just have to connect the spar. Okay, and then you have something to work from. You know, it's framed, and now you got to put the the pieces, the cosmetic stuff on. Okay. okay, that'll lay in there nicely. Take it out. Let's see. Uh, one second. Uh, okay, no problem. No problem. Get plenty of glue in there. I don't even worry about it. Wire right out of the way. Drop that in there. Get all the way up against the spar. Okay, I can hold it now. Just throw some kicker in there. Now we got one piece of this, one piece of the puzzle. Right? Oops. Off we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Let's give that a second. Now, this piece here, Woody, I want to take, see what a quarter inch bar is? Yep. I want to break this away. 
and put a doubler right over the top oh, of the quarter inch. All the way over. I'll go get a quarter piece of quarter okay. inch square. I want to go tip to tip. I'll get it cut all the way. You want a piece I of I want to go from here, long. Yep. this long, quarter inch, six inches long. All right. And that'll lock that piece in. I'll get it ready for you. Okay, with two pieces in, what we're trying to do is establish that we have a piece connecting the top, and a, then we'll put a piece, of course, on top, so that the wing has some support, and then we have to make up the piece for the leading edge, make this piece here. But, but the wing has to be supported with this, just like these two, the, uh, the spar pieces, the beams, whatever you want to call them, hold everything in alignment while we make all these cosmetic pieces. How's that coming off? Still coming off good, huh? Yeah. All right. All right, let me go get the quarter inch square. I'll take care of that. What I do is measure from this inside piece to the last rib. Give me the length. I just did. Then give me, okay, give me the thickness, and we'll make like, like a landing gear spar clip out of that quarter inch wood. You That'll want, hold you this. Want quarter by quarter or quarter by No, quarter? I want the whole piece. What I want is the dimension here. Yeah. And it, so that this piece looks like a big rectangle, oh. and we'll jam that in there. That's our support. Do you, do you see what we'll I'm saying? Jam it in up and down. There's, just like an I-beam spar. We'll make an I-beam spar in there. Then we only have to deal with these cosmetic ribs. Just get the get the dimensions. Take a little piece of wood. If you want to get a dimension, you got it. Yay! Okay. Make it a little bit oversized, and we'll trim it. Stick a piece in here like this, and get the dimension so it goes inside the spar. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, let me press that. Okay, there's your inside dimension right there. There you go. Okay. I'm going to make it a little bit big. Just woody eyes it. Yeah. Make it a little on a big side and we'll just trim it, trim it, trim it till it fits in there. Because otherwise you got nothing holding this wing from just flapping up and down like a pigeon. Pigeon? Where Woody's years and years of experience as a building inspector he's, and a he's contractor. The king. <laughs> he is the king. The king of pigeon wings. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, if there was some other real cute way to fix this, fine. But and you have extra ribs, right? So we can we can, we can butcherize. Them. We can cannibalize the ribs. Okay. Now There's you see. There's one other way to do this. Okay. Just go steal one of lens planes. <laughs> <laughs> Sand down the yellow plane. Now we're going to have to worry about. We're I don't know. Wiggle that in there somehow, but it'll go in. Trust me. Trust me. Jeez. After this, the yellow plane may go through this. Okay, we got to cut off. I don't want to shorten this. See, no. that's the problem. Take off. Uh, we will leave off some dimension. It's hitting the gear blocks. Okay. Take off at the short end. Take off three eighths of an inch. The key here is lots of new XL blades. <laughs> Every time you make a cut. Okay, now what we did, if you can see, we made like the equivalent of half of an I-beam spar. But notice, it's only attached on one side. So see the gap up there? Now I can do the wing alignment. I can hang it up by the lead out. And I can do a wing alignment and then tack that to where it's in neutral. And then eyeball it before I put in any more of the structure. You understand what I'm doing here, Dave? Yeah. Without that, without that piece in there, you're working in no, midair. It's, it's, it's impossible. You're never going to get it done. So what we want to do is, he's got it glued on one side. We want to hang it from the lead out. I have a nail there. Then I want everybody to sight it. I'll tack it and sight it. Because if it's one way or another, we can just break the tack and go right out and do it over. Yeah, I think that's going to work fine. All right, finish up what you got to do there, and I want to hang this up. Now, we've been looking at this from a lot of different angles. Just put a little wedge in there. Now, let me get back here. Whoops. Stand back. The further, hold the flaps in neutral. Okay, you got... That wing is at... Oh, I'd say you're within, you're within a sixteenth of an inch now. Put a little more shim in there. Let's see, a little... Let me see, more or less. I think it's a little less. I think it wants to come back towards you. Okay. Now. All right, take the shim out and put a thinner shim in there. Let's just get the shim that makes it look like it's just about right. Yeah. I can't 
get you just back this just one back off. it off a little bit listen. or make a wedge you know what would be good woody yeah, make wedge. make like a shingle like a wedge like a wood shake <clears throat> we're trying to look at it yeah so i'm trying to line it up with the tail too that's exactly what i was doing okay but other than being able to do this you really got you know zero and none you got choices of zero and none here okay there you go look at it from as far away as you can you'll always it'll always look more accurate from far away and once we get it shimmed we'll tack it in position of course okay ready i got it all right now go stand by the car and let me look at it no way no, it's, no way. it's gotta go way back more. It's gotta go more. It's gotta go a lot more. It's gonna be pushed from here. That wing has to come over, yeah. Like that. I gotta That's push. exactly right. It's Hold gotta roll. The, my wing has to come down. It's gotta roll. Now you say now. say when it's Yeah, but now the thing that you've done is you've bent the flaps on me. I can't see anything. You yeah, don't bend the flaps. I got the flaps. The flap has got to stay. Stay yeah, right back by the window. Now that's way too much. Okay, let's let it go a little bit. Let me just look at the shim. Right about. Say when. Not bad, right there. Okay, put, hold it. Let me get one drop of glue on there. Right where your finger is. Go get the glue. I'll hold the plane. Go ahead. You keep looking at it, Woody. Well, just just put a tack. Even if we. Even if we have to cut it and break it. Gotta go more. Gotta right. go more. Roll roll the body. That way? I'll try it. Try it there. That's way too much, but let's see what happens. Okay, just let it put a little kicker on it. Let's just get a look at it. Because once that's holding it in position, then we can build a spore. Yeah, it's gotta go back a bit now, bear in mind. It does have to go back, Wendy. Okay, what does that look like? That's better. Say when that's before he about kicks as good it. As you're gonna get right there. Okay, kick it. Put some kicker. Try it. On. Looks reasonable? Try it. Okay. Put plenty of kicker in. That's, that piece is going to eventually just, just be a uh, holding in position. Okay. Reasonable or you know, terrible? Looking from the dock into the light into the everything else. Okay, we can turn it around too. Let's just let it kick off. I think now it's so it's hanging it. on its own weight. Put some more kicker on that. Now it ought to sit on the table. Well, let me go look at it. Hold it from where my bottom hand is, so that nobody's hand is behind a flat. Let me look at it. It's got to go a sixteenth of an inch. It's not much. Not much. Not much. It's it's got to go. I, I don't even think we should. Be because, okay, oh, okay, here's the reason. You gotta put a little shim in here. It's wiggling up in here. Right, you get All right, stick so you a put sixteenth a shim up in there. And then let's rehang it. Take it down. Put a sixteenth of a shim in there, Woody. Uh same thing, make a little wedge. Make a, make a little wedge for that. Let me turn it so that the wing is up. Here's what you need to do now. Get it? So that if anything, this wing is gonna have to go down. Down that way. Okay, so let's look at how much of you how much you need. You need uh say a six yeah, make a shingle. That's all. Just make a shingle for that. And what we need to do is get out the same thing under here. This piece is still loose. And then fine tune it and lock it in position and then start building up all the cosmetic stuff around there. Okay, what I want to do, trim the shim, yeah. even, so it's a square, yeah. and put a piece in here. Put that piece back in there. So that we're, we're, we're just under the flushness of the tubing, yeah. of the, uh, the tubing, the sheeting. Okay, we'll just cut this piece out. Can I shut this door and keep the cold? Yeah, out? yeah, it's getting cold out there. The butchery as that is, it is holding the wing relatively straight for the time being. We want to fill that gap with a piece. Then I want to do the same thing for the leading edge. Get rid of this. I want to get those ribs that you have, those extra ribs, and start dropping them in. All right, let's cut this piece up here first. That's the first thing. Notch that right down. Okay. 
thing is to get this hinge piece, we can cut two pieces of eighth inch square to build this back up and then put some glue around that hinge. That'll give us a surface to work off back there. This flap isn't broken, it's just a cosmetic. This must be that you just ran by something and it, dragged it. It ran over the fence post. It dra yeah, because it wound, it, up, it wound up hitting the there. Post. Okay. Hey, this Woody's got this figured out, huh? He knows about draft angles and everything. What a guy. There you go. And put a brand new XL blade in there anytime you have to, boy. Just I drop it right in. Go. Pull on a chain and shut the door. <laughs> That's for freezing his time when he's this, out the These modern guys with garage door. This is this is ancient garage, baby. Okay. Yeah, if you get a draft angle on both sides, we can drop that piece right in there too. We're not trying to save the sheeting, Woody, to hell with the sheeting. Okay, we got that piece in there now. That piece is and that bridges across. Now take that flat ruler and let's make sure we don't have a, a whoopus in there. I brought out the flat ruler right there, Wood. Well, I cut it with a... Uh, yeah, just lay the wood over here and see if you can see. I cut it with a straight inch, so I should... Okay. Well, you got plenty there for wood. Okay, you've got plenty, plenty for material. Okay. Let's see if we can beef this up somehow. I'd that feel a lot more just comfortable. Just what I was getting ready to cut. Yeah. It's eighth inch. And yeah. I'd I'd feel a lot better if that I'm was a run it with the grain the long way because yep. what's what we were intention. Yep, that'll work out fine. And just put a little support like double up on it. Cut a piece all the way from there to there. There you go. That'll do it. All the way from there to there and about three quarters. And how's this end coming? Oh, you're already on a tail. Look at this guy. One wing done. Now oh, see what when this got like this, this is from getting too soaked. Right. It just got a that. But it'll dry out. It'll dry out. Yep. Just, just let it. Just like when you, what happened? As it was soft, you were pushing on it. If it doesn't, you can cut the bay out because you're going to do that bay anyway. Or you can put one coat of shrink dope. And these should, this should come right off now. This was all done. The back of this plane was sprayed with an airbrush. It's coming off pretty. Oh fast. yeah, yeah. It'll come right off. This is a good technique. Yeah. I doubt. Right. I doubt you have. Uh, in an hour or so, you can pick up the technique and you can do this to anything. It is, there is a trick to it though. There's a little trick is get it wet, but don't get it too wet. There's, there's like a, it's like sanding silver without going through. There's a little bit of a touch. Always good, of course, to practice on the bottom first. And it's that get it wet, but don't get it so wet that it's drooling and dripping on a table and going in your shoelaces and everything. Okay, and we'll get a little more support in here. Then we could lay in those half ribs. Glue. If you glue this, and I can hold this with the ruler, this will hold this straight. Good. Now we got more kicker than we know what to do with. Oh yeah, that one works better. <laughs> okay, put that right it right along there. Right along. Oh, I'm holding it with the ruler to keep it flat. Okay. That'll stiffen up the back here. Now Dave's got extra ribs, so we can cut the ribs no. in half. We only need to use. You know, half ribs. All right, that'll that'll give us an edge here to work off. Woo! Hey, that's hot. Whoa. Okay. Oh, junk out of it. Pew. Oh. All right. All right, that's a good one. We're gonna get. Uh, we're gonna dress that spar off. I want to get rid of the hard glue that's yep. on there. Yeah. Dress that off. This worked out real nice. And he's still grinding, grinding, grinding. Almost time for dinner, you know. Oh, at any time you un you, you're going to bake a joint in sheeting, we're going to put a tongue under here and, and make it like a slice of bologna on an angle. It's the angle that'll give you some extra glue area. There's the extra number two rib. You can see where it's going to make it a little bit too big to begin with. You could put it right up alongside of this, but there's no reason to. We'll just pull this piece out, gouge that out just a little bit. Let's see, there's some stuff has to come off of here. And we can get that rib in. We can also get this one. This one, what you do, Woody, and rather than pulling this out, because it'll weaken the just sheeting, go beside it. Put it right beside it. Inside, yep. That amount isn't going to mean anything. Okay, little by little, this is coming together. Boy, did you read that thing about those airliners that don't have the bolts holding the tail yeah. on? Yeah. They recoil. Holy mackerel. 
Hang on to your hat. Here Whoa. we go. <laughs> the airliners with the thin leadouts. Yeah. Yeah, right. Ooh, the airlines with no leadouts. No leadouts is right. Mm. Okay, you just got to cut. Now you're going to obviously have to make a a hole. Make your make your hole for the leadouts there. Because you got a plenty big spar, you're not going to have to stiffen that spar up. Just make the notch and slide it over the back. Yeah, that'll be good. That's the way to do it, baby. But I'm not going to make it that big. I'll tell you one thing, as soon as that sun went down, it got cold it out did. here. Well, I feel like I'm working in New Hampshire. At, this afternoon at lunch, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, even Kenny was, oh, what a nice day, oh, I think we'll go swimming down the beach, yeah. And you should be able to snake it, you might have to trim the back. Well, is it the back I got to trim or is it the front I got to trim? It's the front, you well, got to notch the front. Don't forget, you've also got an angle on the back that's got to come that's off. That's right. haven't right. been sanded yet. Take the angle off the first. Angle off. By the way, that's one of the nice things about building a cardinal kit. If you need ribs, you can just go get laser cut ribs. Mmm, so nice. Mm, the problem is these, are, these don't match. Poor Dave, these were these in the pre-laser pre cut days. Hmm, when we built Leonard's, or what was it, Robert Charles' laser cut kit, I matched them up to mine. I said, spots you might have to knock down, but that's basically going to take that one. That That'll fix top and bottom and all okay. the way. Now that can go down just a fraction. Okay, more. take a little off. Because of this notch that I've got up here at the top is not deep enough. Okay. When I get to the end of this, we got to get inside. It's five or ten or six. All right. Well, we'll pick this up tomorrow. It's a lot of fun. Do a lot of fun. This is this is one of the high points of. Uh, oh, as as Woody <laughs> as Woody goes over the table. The table goes and all right. on the guy. Gee. Woody, this is the reason you had children to begin with. There you go. All right, there you go. Glue it in. That one's ready to glue. Glue it in, and then we go have some. Make this hole up. opened I'm up. I'm going to do that after. Yeah, that. yeah, that thing's going to be banging on that after for the next 2,000 years. What's that? I'm going to open up the okay, hole. Okay, for day one of the great Cardinal Reconstruction Project. Time for Don Pepe and some Mexican food. What is it, Spanish or Mexican? What are we doing Portuguese. over there? Portuguese. Oh, my God, I get through with you. Oh, my oh. God, we'll talk like Carlos Sarah. Tune the pipe when we're done. I'm not going to have a... Where is Carlos when guys. we need him? Angola. Oh, Angola, yeah. His Piper Cub flying. Day two dawns on the big Midgley refinish job. When we last left Dave and Crusader Rabbit, they were putting ribs in the wing. Yeah, you got to get one more rib in there, Woody. Yep. Oh, we had to open up that hole where the, exactly the lead out where says. I'm All right, we'll open that up. <coughs> Dave's got a couple spots on the body where there's a lot more paint than other spots, so. Scuffing the paint, is, it, is the scuffing helping any? We'll find out. Scuff it, it lets the, the thinner penetrate in there better. What we're doing is building up a little ledge, like on a wood floor. You get the other rays fitting the ribbon, but it's this little ledge that allows you to catch this edge. So when we drop this piece of sheeting in, you don't have a joint out in midair. And we're going to do the same thing back here. Put a piece underneath so it has like a little step, and then that top piece just acts like a cork, just with with reverse draft angles going in all directions. We should be able to drop a piece of sheeting right in there, and we're trying to work from the back to the front of the wing. Get the front piece and then we'll flip it over and do the work that we need to do on the top. What do you know about draft and so forth? Then you got have a degree in aircraft aerodynamics. If you don't think I do, just ask the school teachers. They said all I ever did was read airplane magazines, trying to teach with me English and airplanes. spelling and everything. Airplanes with draft. Forget it. You sure that's not with a G? Well, graft and draft is good. Ah, oh, you're getting some of that with the tail's all done. Jeez. Actually, the DuPont stuff works. The DuPont's a little better. Well, let's put this on the video. Sure. I'll let you know. For somebody that's trying to do this, he's got two different brands of retarder, and we tried acetone. Well, I can guarantee you one thing, because I have done it both ways. 
If you go to take this off with wet and dry sandpaper, an M600, this is not a two day or one day job. This is like sand in a house. This is for, for all purposes about a third the work, a half to a third the work. Put the two ribs in, I can start working on making this sheet. We got the two little caps here and here. You're gonna work on fitting up the two front pieces yeah, of the ribs. Yeah, where the hell's the other half? You lost the rib. That's under there somewhere. I got it. Ah. I got it. Boy, Oval Wright never lost the ribs. Come on. All right, I can start fitting this up. And of course, all of these angles have to have a draft angle. Without a draft angle, you're just gonna have butt joints that'll come through as soon as you put it in the sun. It's coming. Got one piece of sheeting roofed in there. Now I wanna make the same thing, make a ledge out here, a little ledge in here, and then rough in this piece and use the spar for the joint. I wanna have the spar for the joint. That becomes my ledge. So I can get that piece framed in there. And you're getting the front ribs in there. I'm just trying to... Well, you're gonna have to cut. Don't forget, you gotta cut a I've quarter already, inch off of that. I've already done that. Okay, we'll just keep cutting because it's the leading edge we care about. Let me just try to get this almost level for we because I can't work up there where you are yet. We can blend this in. See with those little edges in there, Woody, how nice that works? That's a great little tip, great little trick for doing any kind of repair. Ah, you take full credit for everything I do. <laughs> you young pup. <laughs> Just don't stick my XL knife in your pocket. I see an eyeball in my padded angle XL knife. And if that winds up going back to Hampton, you're in trouble. Well, I'm watching that Brodak 40 downstairs. Uh-uh, if that Brodak 40 disappears, you're in trouble. In fact, nothing can disappear. Ah, you okay? Got your medicine? No, they... They didn't have it yet? Oh, They're not boy. even talking to me yet. You gotta leave a message. Wow. Ridiculous. The American medical profession. Okay. All right, Dave, did you see this piece? We got the first piece framed in here and almost block sanded out. That first one is almost... This is gonna have to be a little touch-up when we get to that point, but that's pretty well level, level, and I don't want to harden it up until you get the rest of the paint off around it. That piece fit right in there nice. And it's got all bevel edges and all those little shelf edges on the bottom, so it should be... This actually should be stronger than the other wing when they're done. Okay. Yeah, that's looking okay. How you doing, Wood? I'm fine. Now this seam up here, when you want to level this seam off, let me get the paper towel. There's no substitute for leaving a sanding dust right in there. You just go right around it with some CA, wipe it with a paper towel, and do it about fifth tape. Great place to store the CA. Okay. And after about five coats of that, don't kick it. Let the, let the grease from the paper towel or dust kick it. Oh, that's nice. That's coming. Okay. Yeah. Okay, next piece is going to be, i got to lay that out. Next part of this was, we got the ledge in here. The ledge in here. Now I have to kind of just interpolate this part. Make sure this is all block sanded down, and then get the next piece in there. So I'm just going to hopefully be able to work. By the time I get there, I'll have that little piece in and have those ribs block sanded, and we'll be able to flip it over soon. Okay, now the trick here with this piece of sheeting is to cut it a little bit oversized because it's going in on an angle. It's oversized. Dress it off on an angle until it's almost right and then push it the last little bit so it acts like a cork. That angle in there is the critical thing. Okay, one more little swipe, a little more off the front and the back. Good. Oh, how's that look, girl? Ah, that Real close. Worked. 
He's giving me the good stuff. It's about ready. Can you hit me with CA right along this seam while I'm holding it down? Just uh, do this one. Just, just walk a bead of C, uh, CA down here. Okay. Let that kick off. We need we we need a break from this repair job. How's that look, Dave? The white stripe looks good. He's just got a back mass of tissue if he wants to paint it today. Is this yellow tissue? Yeah, just yellow tissue. Hmm, where do you get that canopy? Hmm, that comes in the kit. Does it? Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that isn't one of mine. That pilot's nice. The cigarette. <laughs> It's marijuana. <laughs> yeah, it looks cool. He's got a back mask, though, if he wants to try painting. I don't know about the humidity today. It's is still humid Sig out. Is silver? Is this that? Sig silver. Okay. Really dry. Cool. Well, whenever you're done pouring that, we can get back to work in the dungeon in there. Nice looking muffler. Be a lot more fun painting. Locked himself out of his house the other night. <laughs> He's got to go get keys made or something. Anyway, we may get this painted today. We're waiting for the humidity to burn off. It's still humid out. Boy, that sun is nice and warm. Right? Yeah, if you're in the sun. Can't even take a break around here. They come right back. Back to work, slaves. Oh, hey, that's coming out good, though. We're ready to lay that front piece in, Woody? Uh, oh, you got it. Oh, I'm, st I'm still working at it, dear. Sure, like okay. Be for a minute. All right, but the next thing is to lay out the front sheeting. You just thought you were going to get that sheet. We finally moved the operation outside here. <laughs> it's warm enough out here you can work. You can almost work without a coat out here now. Woody is. <laughs> You're tough. I'm freezing inside. Yeah, well, just leave the door. It'll warm up. Yeah. That's going to be ready to flip over in, in five minutes or so. Yeah, Let me see if Kenny can start getting that noble mast off. We can kill two birds with one stone here. Now, some of the spots on his body had so much clear. Basically, from the flaps back, it had a lot of clear, Dave? I don't know. Just on the body. There's yeah, some we'll spots see. on the body that we... We were just using up gallons of thinner to try to get off, and we decided we'll just take some 220 sandpaper and grind it off. It just wasn't really productive. We're just taking too long, so that part he's working on. Woody's working on dressing off all these little joints. Boy, these joints, you can hardly even, you can't feel these at all. And we made a plug. Let me show that plug, Woody. There's a little spot that just wasn't, had a little divot in it. We just pressed a piece of soft wood in, CA it, and just block sand it right off. Oh, that's nice. That's going to be perfect. Nice working out here anyway. A whole lot better than being in the dungeon. Yeah. We got here for the middle, for the middle of January. It's beautiful. <laughs> January, what is today? January 10th or something? We got airplanes above us and airplanes below us. Airplanes. Us and now, actually, for anybody that doesn't know, this is my neighbor's house, and he's on vacation. <laughs> We're watching his house. We're using his backyard for an airplane factory while he's he's in the Canary Islands. He's got a great patio. Yeah. Wait till he comes home and his balsa trees growing around here. This guy, we got him out in the sun here. The sun is really getting bright now. Drying up the, we have, what do you got, about three coats of dope on a fuselage already? Yeah. It needs to be tissued. We're hoping we can get all the tissueing done in one operation here. The tissue on the body and tissueing up those little uh, patches on the other plane. Blend right in, Woody, no problem oh, yeah. at all. I'm get, picking up a ridge right along the old paint line. Yeah, you're not going to get rid of that because you're going hard to saw. Don't even worry about it. You can't. Because when we glass this, then you can blend the glass into the fillet. Yeah. You know what I mean? Otherwise, you're not going to do that. You're I, blending a marshmallow into a brick. You're never going to get a nice edge. I think that's as good as we can possibly All right, as soon as it's ready, let's clear the table. The table's just about cleared. Okay.
You ready to start throwing some tape on this guy? Another couple of minutes. I okay. Just want to look at the bottom, and then it's absolutely getting to be a nice day out there. It's nice and sunny. Dave's got his dope drying up on the other plane already. So, when you get a chance, when it's convenient for you, take the cowl off. Okay. You could use that. Put one roll of paper towels under the front if you want. Give me the cowling and give me the paint. I'll spray the cowling and we'll see if it's going to blush. Do you know what I mean? Let's yeah. see if the cowling isn't blushing. If we can paint the cowling and it doesn't blush, we're in Fat City and we can be painting today. That's great. We got multiple projects going on here. I really wanted to get some clear on this thing today. Try to get the purple on this and get Dave and Woody their repairs. They're repairing two planes. We have four planes under construction here at one time. Isn't that a good feeling? <laughs> <laughs> Not for me. Oh, you're all ready. Hold that up. I want to see the wing from the back. From the front, I mean. You know, like when you look down the nose? Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's perfect. Come on, that Woody knows his stuff, huh? Man. Woody, you're okay. I don't care what Ken says about you. Full range, so you know nothing's going to be hitting. full range, and that's full range. Okay. I'm thinking the first thing we should do is in here where it's broken. You got that tack, but let's get a piece up under here. Well, we already have a piece up under there. What am I worried about? You got one piece, but that's put good. put that in from down below. Yeah. Now, we want to trim this even and get a shelf going in here. This is a problem. So you don't have a lot to grab a shelf onto. Well, we'll take, we'll take one of his, we'll make a rib pattern. Let's make a rib out of quarter-inch wood. Yep. Glue it in there. Pull this piece off. Pull this piece off so we have a ridge. Let's see, where's the rib that we need? Oh, you got plenty in here, Woody. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. All right, that should take care of that. And we're going to, this you could just sand down and we can glass. I'll make a uh, piece of a rib to go in there. Is the back of this coming off easy? What's that? Back here? Yeah. Can you get that coming off without a problem? Or I think you're going to wind up with a plane a couple ounces lighter just by having... <laughs> I mean, yeah, there must be a gallon I mean, of clear on. No, this wasn't heavy plane in the first place. No, but it'll be even lighter now. God, you didn't add anything up here as far as a couple of pieces of eighth-inch wood is all you added. That's not adding anything, but you're going to take off a couple ounces of paint. Still a good-looking plane, even if I don't take full credit for it myself. <laughs> Woody, we don't pay six. Now we did a little test on this candy apple paint just to see if we're going to like this color. And what I'm trying to determine is if, if this doesn't fog up from the humidity, this is a beautiful color. This is the color the, the nobler is going to be. All right. So he's down there masking. We still have to make a patch for that wing. Oh yeah, but always good if you're doing this kind of stuff. Give give yourself a half an hour because we did have a well so much humidity. We did have a problem more than once already. With a half hour later, it'd start to fog up. I'd feel a lot better if we didn't have to do that. But but that is a nice color, I'll tell you. This is going to be one beautiful plane when it's finished. Next thing I did, I made like a little I-beam half rib in here because I want to make a shelf. There's obviously no way you can just join that wood in there. So I want to build out all of the areas around here that I'm going to the end of with a little bit of a shelf. And then I'll have to trace that part out. How you doing back there? That's coming off the pretty array, good. Yeah, the DuPont stuff works real well. The DuPont stuff is working the best. The DuPont That's 300S. What we've found out so far. 300S? Yeah. 300S. Now we have enough on here that we have a little shelf. Now making this pattern up is usually a question of getting the length right and little by little chipping in on each side. And I'll make sure I have this nice and smooth that I don't have one rib sticking up high or one low. 
get the glue ready. Now the other thing I'm going to have to do here, let me just tack it first. I got the angles put in. Come on. Let's see if we can get a... Leave this, I'll fill that because we got a piece underneath. Give me that seam there if you can. Jesus. Try not to get any on the plane. <laughs> All right, I take it away. Just did. I'm just dripping out of everywhere here. Dripping out of everywhere. That one, that side looks fine. Flip right. it over and let's see what the other side sanded out like. I think you're in Fat City. You may have to work that edge a little bit more. Front edge. Yeah, that may need a little more work. But it's solid. Dave, I, I put some pressure on the wing to see if it's solid. It's solid as a rock. You're not, you're not the structural part. When that's glass, you won't even have a cosmetic problem. That's no problem at all. No, that's good, Wendy. It's, it's fine. Move it into the sun. Hey, we're freezing in there. You don't know how cold it is. It's getting cold. We were getting spoiled working out in the sun. Put it all the way over on the grass. The hell with it. He's not going to be home for another couple of days. Set his house on fire, he the says. Sun, so we'll move the table. <laughs> That's what you think. One wall behind it. All right, you got a couple of coats of CA on the yeah. gouge. Just block sand it and keep okay. CA in it and wiping it with a paper towel. Tell us. Well, that feels real good, Woody. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yes. I don't know, but I, that is definitely good. <laughs> oh. And if we don't, just don't lose the sun today, if not, maybe we'll paint it tomorrow. I get all masked off today. Head out, Cowling King. Hate it. Hate Want it. your money back? Sand it off, paint it black. <laughs> all right. Put that somewhere over there. Well, we could leave it outside, but... All right. All right, maybe what you'll have to do tonight is take this home. Take it, do the foil over it up by your house and paint it tomorrow morning. Because we're losing the sun out there already. It's getting cold. So you're basically ready to glass now, no problem? Yep. Okay. A little bit of dusting down and I'll have it in a okay. minute. This can be drying. Ken won't be ready to paint today, so no matter what, he's going to have to take it home. I may be able to help him. It doesn't take three guys to glass. There, I can do that. I can help him lay tape. Okay. If that'll be a help. Yeah. You really can't use two guys even in the glass, even if you want to. No. Right. It's really not not even practical. Well, I'll stand there for moral support. Okay. I'll have to. I like that. Looks like the one you got up in your house, huh, Dave? A little bit. The mama. The mama cardinal. Actually, it don't look good today. What's that? It don't look like it's going to dry well today. All oh, the rain we've been having, man. You can see we did get rid of some of the uh, the fogginess. This is the second coat of clear. I'd like to get two or three coats on today if I can. But we are a little on the thick side when it clogs up the gun like that. We are definitely trying to take advantage of the nice weather. In fact, they all went down, even though I don't think they're going to do it, to try to get Kenny's thing masked off, get a team effort going on that.
Yeah, that's drying up nice. We're just giving it... This is the third coat. here as it should. Is it beautiful? There's Dave's finish in the box. As the Cardinal team goes into full production mode, the tinfoil team. All right. Mitchell, you should have this down with science by now. Believe me. Man, alive. You still got about an hour out there to paint. Don't uh, don't hit the panic button yet or anything. Panic button's been Get hit. Get on the glass, mister. Been hit. How many guys on the planet do you know that can wrap three-quarter inch masking tape around the corner? Ooh. <laughs> That's a wall prey trick. Ooh. Me. How's this coming? Sanding man. Getting ready here for. All right, we'll be ready for glass. glass on this soon. We got a we got a, some, a, right. a big divot in here that I'd like to try to get rid of. Uh, throw a little spackle in there. You really find a bad spot? You got the spackle in here, right? I think. You got the glass cloth cut. Let me go get the resin now. Even though we have a couple little divots here, we still want to fill in. What we want to do is we want to get the bondo to the filler on top, not underneath. Let the cloth go right through there. So just cut it a little oversized for now. I think that'll be fine. Put the all right, I'll go mix the way you want to. And yeah, I'll go mix up the resin. We'll be all set. Okay. Cloth out there, my boy. Lay it out there. All right. It's big enough. That's if it's extra, it doesn't matter. We're going to sand it off tomorrow. Just use your fingertips to pat it down. Patting down, I don't have to do anything fancy in that. That's plenty good. Over. Yep. There we are. Just slide it right over. Okay. 
so he could use either one. This is not for play, you know, this has to work. Okay, we can get this right up in the fillet here. Yep. Let's just get the rest of this off of here. Do you hate this and make it? Yeah, we're going to get the, the hair dryer in one second. Let's let this soak and just drop it down. That's okay. We'll put the joint on the bottom where they join. Yep. Leave the extra that's sticking up here and just sand it right off the mark. It'll sand right off. Once it hits that little edge, oh, it's gone. It's gone. Sure. You don't have to make it fancy or pretty or anything. And the bottom obviously will do the same. Get it right up in the fillet here. paper towel with a little alcohol on it and just feather the edge in, but I wouldn't even worry about it. No, sand it on. A little sand right off so quick yeah. tomorrow, you won't believe it. Okay. Okay, you're in. Yep. You got the gloss? Just, just lay it on there. Once we hit this with heat, this oh, right in it. Doesn't matter. You don't have, doesn't have to be fancy. Okay, we just drew that out with some heat. That's going to dry till tomorrow. Say, say hello to Joe Ortiz. Hey, Joe Ortiz. <laughs> the gang's all here. Start the party. Okay, you guys almost ready? Should I stop mixing paint? Very close. All right. Get going, baby. We got no time to party here. Usually, he's the master of make the tape get thin. I'll make, I'll, I'll take Yeah, that midgley. Back to that Show him the trick, Dave. Right there. Hey, what a guy, what a guy, what a guy. We'll, we'll get that working. Okay. Okay. When do you, uh, will you have room for my plus? Come on, 46 p.m. Looks great. It is actually a um, extended uh, 46 p.m. Nice rudder. I like the rudder. Nice cowl. Nice plane. What the cardinal look cowl? Yeah, nice. It's a pattern mask, the wing. Do you have the plans to this, or did Mike Rogers have them? Who had the no, plans? I, I didn't do any, uh, use plans. Oh, you just did it off the cores and stuff? Like, sort of like Suarez. I just yeah. Put together. Like Suarez, okay, cool. Yeah. Now we're going to bend Jimmy's leadouts up using the patented break the wire and have to go in and cut the wire out again oh, technique. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, make sure it's clean or dry or whatever. Yeah, this Okay. The women up there cooking dinner. Oh, look at this. Hey, fat boy, he's doing his laundry. <laughs> uh -oh. How's everything down at unemployment, Craig? <laughs> oh, he goes from 500 a week to 65 with no change in lifestyle. <laughs> he's got a rich uh, You're mean. Dad. Yeah, right. He's mean. Bad to the oh. bone. You guys don't know how to make model aviation fun. Hot. Come on, Debbie! Come on down! Hey! Good. Good. Yeah. Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. What yeah. are you doing? What's it look like for dinner up there? Are we going to have anything to eat tonight? No. No, I, 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 I thought so. Food tonight. Look at these guys. Come on. Is that fish still uh, Yeah, he's down? upside down again. Oh, this Hi. silly thing. Ernie. Come on. Ernie's upside down. Hi. Bert and Ernie. They're hungry. Ernie's still over here. He's upside down. Ernie! Get over here. He's looking at his postcards. Ernie! Uh, they're so fat. Fat? That's the way they're supposed to be, oh, Big Jim I says. No, 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 no. Boy, they're big fish. Like yeah, they're big. I feed them, man. They don't. I see that. <laughs> Look at this they guy. Get he's ready fit. to explode. Oh, yeah. He's That's ready. That's why he's upside down. No, no, no. That's not, they get bigger than that before they explode. That's unbelievable. He's upside down constantly. Look at him. We're not here. Uh, Midgley's, Midgley's. Does anybody know why? Nope. No, I've tried a lot of things. I can't figure it out still. The couple that rubs together. Hey, we we got to get that plane painted for kids. It's, it's going to be dark soon. Spray team is doing out here. Oh my God. Dun 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 dun. Looks like the. Get any runs yet? 
Don't worry about it. No, don't don't, don't go don't make it. Don't even worry about it. Right now you don't have to worry. Don't even worry. I got one of those. I got one of those calls. Someone called me last night. He said, oh, I read your article about the Nobler. I really like it. Call me in Texas. I want to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're a superstar now. You gotta be able to do that. Hey, you're writing the finishing column. You gotta know how to paint. There you go. There you go. There you go. When you're putting candy apple on, some of the tricks. Try to get the stripes going one way, then the other way, then 45. Don't try to get it all on in one coat. There's no such thing as making one coat cover. This stuff takes a couple of coats. And we're kind of running out of daylight, but we have the whole A-team working here. That's fine. That's fine for the first coat. No problem. See, the thinner you put it on, the less chance there is you're going to have one of these big, a, a zebra stripe, they call it. Right. Is that what Walt calls it you're too? Better, you're better spraying it dry than spraying it. Exactly. You can get the gloss with the clear. A whole bunch more. You can put more coats on. Always hold your the hose in the other hand. That's one of the things I was amazed at. Like at Scott's uh, spray seminar, the guys didn't hold the hose in there, and that thing's banging into everything. And with All right. candy apple, if you put too much on, it's not like opaque paint because if you put too much on, the color totally changes. Yeah. Huh? All of a sudden, it, you, you lose the nice color that you're getting, and you say, where the heck did that go? Yeah, it turns to where it's, it's too dark. It's so dark. Well, silver's supposed to Right, you're, you're not going through, through right? right. I think you got a good start on this. Oh, stop. Okay, I think I'll stop here. <laughs> Walk around and let's see. Yeah, that's overspray. Don't worry about that. I would get the well, not really. It's not. It's a reflection. If it was like no, if it's top uh, edge. I wouldn't touch it. it, it Kenny, but if it was opaque, leave it. Okay. If it was like a because like I think that's. What do you think, Jimmy? You could rub it down. But I think it needs more on the side here. Okay, give it a whack. Personally. Jimmy's got the ultimate eye. What does it do? Just disappear in with the. I don't think that's all the spray. I think that's just light on there. I think that's thin? Yeah. Can you hold it up there, Jim? You can just walk around. You see any other spots, Jim? That's uh, pretty good. Hey, you come over here for dinner, and they got you painting the guy's plane. Look at this. No, I think it's going to be fine. It's important to know when to quit. Right, just in this area. Good enough. Quit. Leave it. Now this morning we're getting ready to do all the tissue jobs. One of the things that I've seen the most the most common problem I've ever seen where paint pulls away from around a canopy or around any any reverse curve is because there's not enough dope on the raw wood when you put the tissue on in this case this looks pretty good you've got a little bit of a shine now where that bondo is yeah you got a little spot of bondo get rid of the hair but you've got, I'm trying to show this on the lens, you've got a little bit of a gloss on there, just a little. Now what I would do is take that sandpaper and just see the, feel this with your hand. Just, you see the rough? Just touch it now. Don't sand it down. You just want to take the no, peak. 
Watch your canopy. You just want to take the peak off. Let me see how that feels. See how much better that feels? You can give it a little more even. Because what's happening is the thin dope is swelling up the wood and it goes back and finds its own equilibrium on that. And then I would I would fish you over the glass nose too. I would. I wouldn't. I mean, you don't really don't have no, to, do. but it's cheap insurance. You know, when you get a crack like you have on the yellow one, that just gives you a little insurance. You're not going to have it again. Usually, it's going to be rough right where the joint where that joins that, or where the block right in front of the stab that little joint, and you definitely want to scuff up. When you get to the tissue, you don't want to tissue up over this joint. Tissue about an eighth inch up to it and an eighth inch, but don't tissue the reverse curve. Right. As soon as that tissue shrinks, it's going to want to pull back. And this is all glass, too. The rudder's all glass. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. That's good. Well, the little cardinal, the Brodak cardinal, is the whole body, the whole tail, everything's glass. It didn't seem to add any weight at all. It certainly didn't add enough that I would be worried about it. Watch, it's getting to the end of the table here. Okay. Yeah, and this blends I think in. This is in good shape. Yeah, I'd mask off the canopy just so you don't drip dope on it and get a big. Take some of that eighth inch tape, mask it off. Woody can do that. Cheap I'm insurance. Go out, I'm going to go out and get that paper. Yeah, it's cheap insurance that you're not going to have a problem. It's got a nice look. I like the look of that. It does look nice when you put the big pointy spinner on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty yeah, It's looking. It looks nice. You make wheel pants for it yet? No. We're going to make up the mold for fiberglass wheel pants soon, so don't even bother carving them. And they'll be nice and big and pointy. Nice rudder shape, too. See, now here's my suggestion for the future. See where you have the grain going straight up and down? Back here, the grain should be... You should have cut this even with this. Because right. this is uh, going to be vulnerable, so... The reason it's not is because there's a piece of plywood cut in there that I runs see. out here. But it still would be better with the grain yeah, going out right. to the point. I mean, it's just free no, lunch, then. Right. It's not costing you a penny to have that. What I did was I took a piece of plywood. I see, you got a little plywood ribbon. It's going to look that nice. Works pretty good. It's going to look nice, and you got the Ray Brother linkage on there ready and everything? Yeah, it's all set. Okay. All right, let's take it out and tissue it. Tissue time. You got the Windex out there? We don't have any. These, these, what do you We have about four things that we have to do all at the same time, which is about typical for working in the shop. So what we want to do is take the one that's, the, the yellow plane, you have raw wood on. Get a coat of dope on that. Put that out in the sun. Rotisserize it. While that dope is drying, you can be working on this. You can start on the parts of it, one side, one edge, okay? But always have something drying, or what's going to happen? You're going to get to a point where everything's drying, and you, and you, you get nothing to do. And you, yeah, you're going to stand around, you know, playing Burger King. No, get the get the yellow one with the raw wood. That's what I'm going to And on. soak it. That first coat, get it good and soaking in. What do you want? This masked off? Yeah, mask off the canopy. But you don't want to. Now we're trying to take advantage of all the ultraviolet light we can here to warm these guys up, but hey, you never really do know. It, it's cool out here today. I'm sure Dave is going to probably over there work. Oh yeah, he's in the sun already. <laughs> hey, afraid the squirrels are going to eat these airplanes? Nah. Oh, that purple looks nice. Thought it would be great. What a production line we got going here. Four planes being worked on at once. All right. What are the chances of moving that over here? Let them stay out here and cook. By the way, Woody Midgley is taking back a set of laser ribs. Two sets. They're going to make two more, so that'll be five of these Brodak Cardinals going into production. Come springtime, we should have five of them flying around. All right, all this dope is drying, and what Dave decided to try to do to get out of the wind, because the wind is starting to blow, is set up the table for tissue and over here. We'll see when he gets over here if this is going to be a viable alternative. I think it will be. I'm trying to get out of the wind, so I'm doing the tissue work. 
And this guy is already dry and he's on. How many coats of clear you got on this or a couple? One. Okay. Give it like a half hour between coats. Get plenty of dope on there, though. Probably time. It's probably dry enough to put a second one on now. Okay. Right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You don't see the joints when you sand them out. Just make it convenient. If you're trying to do it in all in one piece, sometimes you waste more time trying to save one joint than, uh, than it's even worth. That, that's still wet? Still wet. Needs about five minutes to tack out. And before we put tissue on this, I want this to at least be dry enough to the touch. It's still a little sticky. We got a couple of bays, but basically it's now back in, back in one piece. Once you get the tissue on, it'll be ready for a, a nice refinish job. Water doesn't matter. I like Windex because it dries quicker. It's got alcohol in it. Yeah, exactly. It dries a little quicker and you don't get that penetration down into the wood swelling up the wood seams. Get it down inside the we are. And once you get it doped down, you can trim around that canopy nice and easy. Ah, oh, so professional. The Rembrandt mids you brush. Oh, yes. The mistake is trying to cover it all in one piece and you get all wound up about having one extra seam and you spend four hours doing it and when you sand it, the seams come right out. We'll cut that out. And you don't want, I, we already went through this, you don't want anything around that canopy where, this, where you have the radius. You don't want any tissue going up on that radius, that's for sure. Now the one part you want to make sure you don't have any tissue over is that fillet going from the rudder to the turtle deck. That's the one that always pops up on everybody. That's the one that's no a pain in the neck. Under. No, if you no tissue, tissue up maybe an eighth of an inch, quarter inch to the fillet, but don't tissue into that fillet, boy. There you go. Whatever what you do. I gotta wet it. Right here. Like on this guy, the way you did that landing gear mount. Watch, you're on a Windex here. I like that landing gear mount. Now you made that. You've got th that you can put the gear backwards, frontwards, or. They slot. Yeah, there are two spots. There's two spots that they, they can either go. go against this wall or against this okay, wall. Okay, good. Yeah, that's real nice. That's a nice little, nice little deep. Well, those came out pretty good. I like the way yeah. everything came out. I like the this, way that. I think this is big enough. Yeah. And the cowling, yeah. knowing you can make another fiberglass cowling in a few minutes if you need it, is 15 minutes instead of three days is a whole different, whole different ball game. It was worthwhile carving the block. The other so one, won't be the other to, one's dry already. You're ready to tissue. We won't it. be able to do anything more on this, I don't think, because it's all got to be sanded out. And... Well, you can get one more coat of dope on it just before you put it in a truck. That's what I would do anyway. But you're really not going to get a lot more done until you can sand this. Oh, cool. It is cool. He looked at these. The whole plane is cool. I think it's going to be a good plane. All it's right. light enough, that's for sure. You ready to do the other one? I think the biggest mistake of all of this stuff is when you just don't have enough dope on a raw wood or you're afraid to press it down. Press that son of a bitch down. Press it. Dave Cook showed me that. The very yes. Part. Years ago. Oh, that's old technology. He puts this stuff on with his hands. Yeah. A lot of times I don't even use a brush. I just, yeah. just to put the material on, but keep patting it down. Don't get any on the cap strips. Let that, let the whole thing seal as an open bay, and then when you put the clear on, it'll attach to the cap strips by itself. Yeah, that's good. Pat it right down. Live to fight another day. In. Okay, that was pretty painless. Now you got one on the other outboard wing, yep, we'll and then we got to flip it over. Uh, 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 now let's hear it, Rich. <laughs>
Anyway, I know he's done here. Sanctions were submitted. You know, it's a matter of public record. You know, what's really interesting is I get these people that call me, they say, when's your contest? They say, I don't know. Call, call Rich Peabody. <laughs> he's in charge. Yeah, I transferred the date from there. Do you have this in Sweden? This is Lar say Lars Ruse. Is that how you say it? No, 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 no. No, different Lars. A different Lars. I know Lars Ruse. Okay. Yeah, say hello to everybody in New Zealand. Hello. <laughs> he's, you're moving to New Zealand, huh? And you're stripping all your planes over there? All planes, everything. Wow, that must be difficult. How many guys in... They have some Pampa members there, yeah, right? It's two. Three. two. Three. Well, you'll have a team now. You can have a real F2B team. You can have... Well, we'll see. In Australia, I know there's quite a few. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah. They got a good contingent there. Boy, that's great. So what else is good? And if it's cheap to live there, call me, because I'm looking for a way to reduce my tax bill here. They just jacked my taxes up again. What else is good? It is cheap. Oh, wow. Okay, the spots you're a little light when you go to spray it. See, you're a little light right in the middle of the body. But now just, that's how you build up a little spray technique. Mm -hmm. A little light. Okay, a little light. But, you, but you're always better to do the second coat in bright sun. The bright sun, as soon as you wet this, you're going to see the color's going to change. It's going to come back again. It's going to come right back. So let's mix up the second coat with a little extra thinner. In here, you got the overspray. Where it's always where it's ricocheting in and ricocheting out. You're always going to wind up with overspray there. The only way you can get around that is put a little more thinner in the paint. So get the paint, bring it in here. Let me mix it up so you can get going. It's You're already into prime spraying time here. Hold it up so you can see the sun on that wing. That color is going to look great in the air. That is really going to look nice. Yep. That is definitely... There are so many stages of this where it just doesn't look right or it looks ugly or, you know, you wonder, what did I have in, have in my mind? Well, you got to look, you got to be able to have vision and see the future before it happens. That's all there is to it. Every time I look at the future, I see atom bombs falling on New York City or something. So. You used to. <laughs> oh. No, that looks okay. Okay, the deal is now we're going to put a little more on the nose. The nose is the only spot that really needs a little extra. Yeah, it's a little bright. Get this by a heating vent. Get it out of the cold as soon as you can, and tomorrow morning take the tape off and get it ready for a coat of clear, and it'll be absolute, absolutely ready. I don't think it gets any better than that, my friend. We last left Silver Guy. He was trying to escape, Dave. You better put him back in the truck. What's this now? Leaving home. <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you, every visit is an adventure. Raising Arizona. Raising Midgley. Anyway, we did get everything done we wanted to this weekend. Well, the plane, the plane, isn't, in, you know, the plane isn't all painted, but hey. Next time you see this plane, it'll be a concourse winner. All the stuff to make two little Brodak Cardinals. Next time we see see these guys, they should have two wings built at least. Oh, there they are. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, let's spy on them. Oh, Brodak Cardinals. Ah. Ah. <laughs> now, what's the deal? If these both aren't done by the mass cup, uh, yeah, I get free pizza or what? What do I get you for get free? You get free pizza here? anytime you want it. Forget it. What, are you making me take the trash with me? Take the trash. I loaded, I loaded everything in there. I don't know what was in there for pieces. Get a black bag and put it in there. No problem. The whole thing right up in the corner. Two corners up here. As soon as Dave leaves, I want to get a little more clear on here on a couple of the spots, and this will be ready. That's going to be about the end of the clear today. This will be ready. We're kind of wrapping up all the loose ends here. Get the noblest some clear tomorrow. They're all going to start to come together here. The uh, dope is on there. Sticky. It's Leave it in the sun for five, ten minutes. The tech, sun will tech, cook it. Tech. Yeah, I don't want to put that away like that. Be st everything will be sticky. I'll put the other one down and put this one on top, I guess. Put it, well, it's in the sun now, but let the sun cook it off. All right, I'm just thinking we got an awful lot done that in a very short amount of time here. This will be all 
Got four major projects done in one when weekend. All, when this is all re-silvered again, that'll be nice. That'll be fine. Next time we see it, we'll have two concourse winners. We'll have three concourse. It won't stretch down. See it? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, work. you got a little piece of tissue there you, you got to sand wall. out. Yeah. Tight. There it is. There you go. Now you're in fat city. Leave with the old man. I'll tell you, age has its privileges, huh? <laughs> well, whatever. If that's what you call it. <laughs> now, now, tell me again, what's this deal? Anybody in the pits at the Nats, doesn't matter if you're a world champion or a nobody. You're out of there. You're, you're out of there. You're not the assistant, you're out of there. <laughs> Throw them out on that's their ears. Right. Saturday morning belongs to... That's right, baby. Belongs to ten guys. Throw them out on their ear. <laughs> pit boss official. I should say official pit boss. Oh, man. Well, the last thing we want to do before we put an end to this, what I think is a most successful weekend, is get some, some queer on here. It's really nice when you can get this many things done in one weekend. Make sure I get a lot extra on the edges. Over my letter sets. Over the lettering. Well, I just hope you've gotten some ideas out of this tape as to how we've dealt with a myriad of problems from time management to getting uh, four or five projects going on the same weekend. Having some house guests, having some visitors, having some fun. Fun, fun. Main thing, fun. Anyway, this guy's going to have to go aside to dry, and I know we have a lot of mail in there to do, so let me get cranking on some of that mail. And one thing, after a, an unbelievable weekend, we really was a good weekend. Going through the mail here, this this is pictures that came from Germany. This actually came from uh, Angelica Moibus. I hope I'm saying that right. And a couple of pictures of her flying here. We've exchanged pictures, of course, of many times. 
And I've asked her to send some pictures of the people she flies with, which she's done. And one of the things, she has a cardinal kit under construction, so I hope it won't be long and we'll be seeing some pictures of her cardinal kit. And this is the group of people that they fly with, the FAI team. I realize she didn't, but she didn't say who the people are, but I, it looks like, obviously, that's her, and it looks like, I can't really tell who the other people in the picture are from the, it's such a small picture. But anyway, Angelica, I appreciate it a whole lot, and we, uh, be sending these on to Stunt News. And good luck with the Cardinal kit, the Cardinal kit. Get it built. Anyway, and this picture is from Bill Farmer from Jackson, Tennessee. This, of course, is a Cardinal kit. Getting sick of looking at these Cardinal kits anyway. <laughs> anyway, he's, he's really, uh, he's got a Stalker 61 rear exhaust. It weighs 57 ounces. He said he's picked up a lot of good information off the videos that he's checked out. He also sent this picture of a Super Clown trainer and a Brodak Accenter. I'm just trying to go through to... He, he said the, the Brodak Accenter flies pretty well with a Lou Woolard Silver Fox 40. He also mentioned that uh, he was really looking forward to getting a Cardinal finish so he could get it flying. Well, keep the pictures coming, Bill. Hey, good luck with the Cardinal. Good luck with everything, in fact. Jackson, Tennessee. Now, another good friend, Watt Moore, from Rock Hill, South Carolina. He sent a couple of nice pictures. This looks like the pictures of their club contest here. But he sent one picture, <coughs> one picture in particular, <coughs> excuse me, that's Kent Stego Red there, by the way. <coughs> the Little Ship, we've got all of these on video before. One of the pictures I love, and I'm going to play a little joke on Tom Morris. I'm going to send this picture into Tom, this of course is Tom Morris taken off, and I'm going to send him a little caption like, uh, I haven't figured out exactly what to do, but I got to. I gotta think of something cute, like identify this flyer and uh, you win a free trip to Tom Morris's for pizza. Anyway, thanks a lot for everybody who sent in the stuff. This is what makes a weekend of hard work really worthwhile is when you have a, you know, you come down and people appreciate the effort that you put into the hobby. And I really appreciate the letters and the pictures. Thanks to everybody. And thanks to this guy. This guy here, believe me, without him, we'd all be uh, a lot worse off. Tom, you done good, guy. Now I just want to end this video on a, a real positive note for myself. I have I very seldom use this picture. This is this is really one of the only pictures I have of this plane. Now if you notice it has what used to be my old AMA number, my new number is seven two six one eight, old number was one two six one eight. Look at the old sweeper and you can see it. This is Harold Price's number three Valkyrie. And I just wanted to put somewhere this is an appropriate time to do it, being we did this rebuild for Midgley. What Harold Price had done years ago is he gave me this plane. I stripped it all down to bare wood, almost exactly like Dave Midgley had done. Sanded it until my fingers were raw meat. And then he helped me put this paint job on. Pretty much what I've been doing to help Ken get his candy apple technique going. And I just look at this and I think how, how funny it is, how appropriate it is, that here we are. It's the complete, the complete circle like the circle of life. It's the complete thing. I've received from Harold all of the knowledge that he was willing to give me, which I think was just great. I've passed it on to Dave and to Ken, and I hope they will in turn be able to pass it on to as many people as possible. And I'll ho I hope you'll take the tapes and the information on them and pass it on to as many people as possible too. And in doing so, this guy here, if he was up in heaven walking around and looking down, he'd be real happy now to see all those planes in the front row. Believe me, believe me when I tell you, this guy was somebody special, Harold Price. I was proud to nominate him for the Hall of Fame, the Pampa Hall of Fame, and we'll just have to see how that works out, although I am very skeptical about how it will work out. I think he is a well-deserving person. 
Okay, and we'll see you on the next tape. Hey, and just remember, pass on the information. It's the circle of life. Anyway, this morning, hey, got it up by the heating vent, sat in the garage overnight, let it just sit up here and cook all day. We got a, a lot of little peripheral details before we were able to fly the plane, of course. We have to make a push rod up. We want to do some buffing of the paint, but basically it's going to have to sit up here a week or so. And the thing with any paint, the longer you let it sit, the easier it's going to be to buff out. So. My plan is to get working on some other projects around the shop, get working over by Kenny's shop, try to get, we hope we're going to be cutting foam wings by the end of the week, but always when you get done spraying the clear, put it up by a heating vent for as long as possible. A week would be the minimum time, even better a couple of weeks, a month, it'll buff out so much easier. Because we're closing in on having that nice Brodak Cardinal finished. One of my plans was today to get out there and break the motor in, get some run time on the motor. I read the instructions over and it says these motors don't need a lengthy break in. I got the Bill Mazzoni tongue muffler on here which he donated to the cause. We're going to be doing that when the weather warms up a little. It, it was really cold out there this morning, but I'm looking forward to getting this, a little bit of buffing on the plane, getting the motor, all the hardware on it, getting a final weight on it, getting a balance on it. We're going to be doing all that in the future, but in the meantime, there's just so many other projects around, and I and I hope that we benefit. We're benefiting you by bouncing back and forth like this, because I know myself. If you stick with one subject too long, it's like don't 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 don't, and it's it really does get boring. And what's happened is by having so many projects to work on, my life has gotten. It seems like it's a lot more interesting than when I was working on a wing for weeks and weeks and weeks and in sanding a week and week. By bouncing back and forth like this, I'm getting a lot more fun out of the hobby myself. And what's nice, because this paint was done the same day, I can use these for a little test when the thing is ready to buff out. I can get the gas tank brackets made up. The little push rod cover, and boy, it'll be a lot easier getting this on than if we had this in a way during all that painting operation. I get this Bill Mazzoni muffler polished up. Now that we have a new polishing wheel, polish it all up. Looking around, but the main thing, and I've done it many times in the past, I've tried to rush and go off the same day. I've done it many times on video, rush and get the paint buffed, but it's always better to leave it up by the heating vent. I know Ken's got the Nobler up by the heating vent. The longer it sits there, it's just saving you time every minute of the way. One final thing we're going to be working on real soon, we're going to get a pegboard. Kenny got from XL, of course, from John Brodak, a real nice selection of, pl of pliers. And you don't know how many times. I mean, I'll show you what we have in the shop. <laughs> Check this out. I mean, this is, the, this is the old junk we've been using for years. I'm really looking forward to using the new tools. What's real nice about it is... Because we're making a new shop over there, we're going to be able to get a pegboard, get everything organized. It makes such a big difference. And I'm sure one of the things that happened over this weekend is we made a firm believer at a Dave and Woody Midgley, especially Dave. He was loving that XL knife. Anyway, thanks to John Brodak, thanks to XL, thanks to everybody. Thanks basically, too, to Harold Price and Big Jim. Hey, thanks to everybody that makes this hobby a whole lot of fun. And Tom Morris, we love you. I don't care what anybody says about you, you still know how to fly. See you on the next tape. And this is just, this is just specifically for Dan Banjak, who I know is sitting home right now with that beautiful Mustang and dying to come up with some paint job to out Ertnowski, Ertnowski. Well, Dan... It won't be that hard. There's so many nice things for Mustangs. Even no matter what you paint it. <laughs> Great. Anyway, we are looking forward to seeing Banjok's Mustang soon. Brodax Fock Wolf 190. Everybody seems to be having a little bit of a resurgence of interest in 
some kind of semi scale and boy I think that's great this is a great paint job here by the way 46 number 46 how appropriate See, this is the whole problem with doing a Mustang is having so many choices of paint job and Dan I hope you're paying attention there are just so many nice check this out that would even look great on a stunt ship I mean if you're making a P-51 and you can't figure out how you want to paint it even if you go with the Reno Air, Reno Air Race deal Warbirds just no Malcolm Hoods I mean there is just no end to it here's one for you Van Jack look at that canopy there's a great idea for a canopy. Anyway, I'm trying to get a little inspired. I've been checking out the books this morning, trying to figure out what I really want to do next with that Spitfire wing, that I-beam wing. The reason I haven't started it, I need the whole table for jigging it up. And we're in the middle of doing too many other things right now. I really don't have use of the table for another week or so. Roto finish, that is nice. This is one they model all the time, big beautiful doll. No end to them. And this I guess is what really makes it fun. To me it really adds a dimension beyond just building straight line planes. It just adds one more dimension to a hobby that's already got a lot of nice dimensions. And boy, you don't know, with all the work I've been doing on the houses and all the work on the shops, you really look forward to those hours that you can... Look at this guy, Jersey Jerk. I never saw that one before. You look forward to these hours of modeling just to get away from the, uh, I don't know, the mundane plumbing work and making shelves and painting furniture. Mustangs. Banjack, it better be good. Think about it, Dan, and we'll see you on the next tape.